YouTube. Welcome back to the Investing on a 9 to 5 YouTube channel. It is your boy, the Dividend Dog. Please hit the like and subscribe button to the channel and like the video too to be notified on any future upcoming videos, guys, so we can keep you updated on when we're dropping stuff on the page. If you're looking to supercharge your investment strategy or you supercharge your portfolio, you've come to the right place. Today, we're going to take a deep dive into the mighty Amazon that's been under some pressure here this week from the DOJ. In this video, we'll also cover why they're being sued, what that means for long-term investors. And as always, guys, I am not financial. I am not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. So please take this with a grain of salt. But I also think this is an opportunity for long-term investors if you're already in it, or if you're looking to add something to your portfolio, this might be worthwhile you're watching here. So once again, guys, thank you for being here and let's dive into the video. As you guys know who Amazon is with Prime, all their fa fantastic products that they have on the the, uh, the website, on the app, you can get stuff delivered in two days. In some places, you can get delivered in a day. They have the warehouses, the data centers, Amazon Web Services, things of that nature, which have helped uh, e-commerce giant, essentially what they have turned themselves into since Bezos started the company um, back in the 90s. And therefore, it's grown it now from a small, like, book retailer to now this huge e-commerce giant and now the doj is basically saying that they are now a monopoly just like we talked about with visa um a couple of weeks ago how the doj was knocking at their door and then months ago they were knocking at nvidia's door as you guys can see the, the trajectory here um with the doj they're just knocking at the big guy's door because they are assuming that they are forcing consumers to use their product and so on so I'm going to give you guys a snippet, uh, basically word for word from from the article that I uh, got this from, and this is basically from one of the the spokesperson um, from the FTC. They're saying that we are pleased with the court's decisions and look forward to moving um, to moving this case forward. And prepared in a prepared statement, Doug Farrar said, "The ways Amazon illegally maintains its monopolies and the harm they cause, what harm, including suppressed competition and higher prices for shoppers and sellers." Will be on full display at trial. I'm I'm gonna interfere here and say I prefer to go on Amazon instead of going to a lot of these bookstores to purchase my books. I can get a better price on Amazon. That's just for my once again, not financial advice, not any advice or anything, but that's just on my end. Don't you guys think you can go on Amazon and get your product for a little bit cheaper price? And today's Prime Day as well, too. So you're definitely getting those deals out of there. So let's take a little bit deeper dive here in the snippet. The FTC and the attorneys general of 18 states plus puerto rico have allegedly in court the e-commerce behemoth is abusing its position in the marketplace to inflate prices on an office platform overcharge sellers and stifle competition that pops up on the market so i'm not a seller on amazon i'm not a seller or anything of that nature on ebay on target walmart things of that nature but those are amazon's c competitors essentially that's all that's all that this is saying. And they're basically saying they're abusing their position as a monopoly um, to, to do so and basically charge people more and make more profit on it at the end of the day. Also, the lawsuit, which was filed in September of last year, is a result of years long investigation into the company's business and is one of the most significant legal challenges brought against Amazon in its nearly 30 year history. U.S. regulators and state um, attorney general are accusing the online retailer of violating federal and state antitrust and consumer protection laws. In the order, Judge Chun of the U.S. District Court um, allowed the federal challenges and many of the state claims to uh, proceed, but he dismissed some claims by New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Oklahoma, and Maryland. So he, they're, they're still obviously going after these guys heavy. I'm assuming that Amazon is going to put some money aside to pay whatever fees, and just like Visa had set money aside, you know, to pay their lawsuit fees and whatnot, and, and still move on for their business. I, I don't think this is going to take Amazon out of the business, but it definitely caused the stock to do a drop here, and we'll take a look at the stock price here, um, here in the next couple of slides. Amazon, for its part, expressed confidence that it could prove its argument in court as the case proceeds. The ruling at this early stage requires the court to assume all facts alleged and the compliant are true. They are not, Tim Doyle said in a statement, adding that the agency's case falsely claims consumer, consumers only consider popular sites, Walmart.com, Target, Amazon, and eBay when you're shopping for home for home products, essentially, or for anything. So yes, everybody goes through four, four of these sites. I use eBay. People go to Target. I use Walmart. 
and I use Amazon. I, I cipher through all of all of those e-commerce platforms because I know I'm searching for the best bang for my buck. And if Amazon gives me the best price for something, I'm more likely going to go there. If Walmart gives me the best price for something, I will go there. Same way with eBay and Target and so on. So it, it's not like Amazon is forcing you to go in your phone, unlock it, tell you to click their thing, and you're getting an extra 50% off. That's kind of how I'm reading it. I could be wrong, but let me know in the comments. You know, like I said, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not in a course. I'm just an average nine to five investor that's trying to put money in the market and, and make some profits off of it, um, lead, you know, leading into uh, retirement here. And then right after that, guys, Amazon stock falls 3% on a rare analyst downgrade. Um, in this report, Ken um, Galrelski, sorry if I butchered his last name, said that he sees multiple headwinds for Amazon. These also include heavy spending on the company's fledging satellite internet business known as Project Coupier and moderating income from its online advertising business. As such, Wells Fargo expects a slow margin expansion for Amazon moving forward. A lot of things about these analysts they're not always 100% right. A lot of them are wrong sometimes, and some of them some of them are right in the middle. But who knows what Amazon is going to do here in the next 10, 20 years. This guy has no idea what they're going to be doing in 10, like I said, 20 years, especially after their AWS, which is a huge profit driver um, for Amazon. And people are continuously to use Prime. You know? And we're going to take a deep dive in, in, in some of their growth stuff um, that they have underneath the hood here. So since we got that boring news out of the way, let's take a look at some opportunities here that we have um, for Amazon. So they closed up today, Tuesday. Market just closed here uh, about an hour and eight minutes ago. Closed up at 182.69. So we had a jump up of 1% today. Stock Rover still has a fair value of Amazon at 218.36. Opportunity. Margin of safety. It means if you were to purchase right now, you're purchasing yourself in a safety net of margin, essentially. At 218. They also have it as a target price at 226, which is a 23% clip from where it's currently at right now. Now, the price to earnings is, is obviously high. Once again, you have to know what you own and why you own it. They're trading cheaper in the future at a 31 PE, but a lot of these companies you can't really look at the PE. You have to look at the price to operating free cash flow. And we'll take a deep dive into that um, in a couple of slides here. As you guys know on the channel, I like to pride myself on looking at that peg forward where they're pricing in the earnings and the growth moving forward um, in the next you know five years or so. And it's at 1.2. Anything at 1.0 and below is considered very value. Maybe you should take a look at it. But Amazon at 1.2, we already know who the big blue truck is with Amazon and what they do and what they bring to the table for businesses and also consumers. Earnings per share is at 63%. It's got a five-year earnings per share growth estimate at 31.8%. It's got sales growth for next year at 10% clip. So double digits. I like anything double digits from sales and earnings per share growth. That means that we are growing at a pretty good rate. It's got a strong buy. Five years, we're up 110%. The last three years, we're up 10%. Last year, up 45% compared to the S&P 500, that's up 36%. Last, um, year to date, up 20%, keeping in line with the S&P. The last month, it's up 2.7% compared to the S&P that's up 4%. So it's an opportunity here to maybe purchase some shares or if you're looking to you know, add to your portfolio or add to your position, could be a good time to start doing that while it's underneath, like I said, underneath this 200 marker. Last five days, it's down 1.3%. But just because of the DOJ and this analyst that comes out and says that it could be a downfall with Amazon over, with their overspending, with their satellite um, internet business. But who knows what, what that business can do? These companies, they have a huge research and development where they take risk on a lot of things. They take our money and they go out and risk and invest in different things like Meta with the metaverse. They didn't, it didn't happen so well with them. And now Meta is turning it around and doing something different with the glasses. So did they burn a lot of cash doing that? Yes, but now they're looking to do something else to help make up for that and even more down the line. So who knows what Amazon will be doing with that internet business here in the future, but I do know the the uh, the AWS, the data centers that they, that they have will be huge for them in the future, which provides um, some profits for not only Amazon, but also provide profits for us as investors. So we'll take a look down here at the portfolio. We currently have 88 shares into Amazon. 
Um, right now, that's around $16,000. We are up 12%, 12.2% on Amazon um, total, and that's around up $1,700 totally um, in Amazon. Now, I'll be looking to purchase some shares here um, in the next few weeks or so. Um, and then, like I said, adding to my position under $200, I think this is a perfect time um, or not a perfect time. Nothing's really ever perfect, but I think this is a great opportunity if you're looking long term to uh, buy one of the, the most powerful companies, e-commerce giants in the in the world. So let's do a quick check. Profitability standpoint. In the past year, Amazon was profitable. In the past year, Amazon has had a positive cash flow from operations, which is good. Amazon has had positive earnings in the last four out of five years. Great. Amazon had a positive operating cash flow in each past um, of the past five years, which is awesome. Even though they have a high PE ratio, they're still profitable by having that high PE. So that's why I um, go to say can't really go off of the price to earnings ratio, even if it is high. Sometimes an expensive business is, ex is an expensive business and, you know, you pay for what you get. So let's take a look here at the price to operating cash flow. For a lot of you that don't know what that is, um, it measures a company's market cap relative to its operating cash flow. So a good ratio is at 10 or below. Low ratios um, normally indicates that the stock is undervalued. And I prefer to use this once again over the PE because sometimes it can be manipulated off of certain things on um, the balance sheet and so on. As always, cash is king. And we can see here Amazon's price to operating cash flow is the lowest it's been since, uh, let's see, January 2023 last year. And well, all the way back to January of 20. Now, you know, now it's at 20.28. Could have gone higher today. But, you know, we see that it's been trending lower. The peg forward is also a 1.2, which again takes into the future earnings and growth, which shows that this stock is essentially undervalued. So let's take a look here at the future. The earnings per share is expected to grow 29% on average over the next over the next year, over the next three years, which is a great sign for long-term investors. Amazon is expected to show quite a strong growth in revenue. In the coming years, the revenue will grow at least 10%. Can ask for more or less. Double-digit growth, That's those are great things here. And then the earnings per share of the next five years, 29%. The next two years, 43%. So Amazon is expected to do some huge things here. And I really think AWS, the data centers, and once again, Prime, you know, you got Thursday Night Football on there now. You got um, you got NBA on there now. You know, they're, who knows? They may even have concerts. You got movies. So now there's value that they're bringing, and everyone loves to watch football and basketball. So people will pay to watch their favorites, their favorite um, team. Once again, the yearly revenue versus the estimates. As you can see, trending in the right direction versus the estimate. And these are obviously the reported ones here. And then once we report for 2024, um, the next earnings, hopefully this will be you know right, right in line of where it needs to be at and so on. And as you can see, 2022 is when they took a dip. 2022 was really a great time to buy Amazon. That's when I really started accumulating some shares. And then now they're making trajectory back up here from 2023 all the way up to 2029 you know, in 2020, 30 and so on, even if 2020, 30, I mean, that's, that's six years from now, you know, that price appreciation from now till then should be huge. Now, once again, don't quote me on that, but I'm expecting big things. I have a high conviction that Amazon is going to um, have a run here soon. Once again, that peg forward, you know, the last five years is 1.84 which compensates for the price to earnings to growth, indicates a rather cheap valuation of the company. Amazon has a very decent profitability rating, which may justify the higher PE ratio. Once again, you pay for what you get. Amazon earnings are expected to grow at 37% in the coming years. This may justify a more expensive evaluation. Once again, just because it's expensive doesn't mean that you shouldn't buy it. Not all things that are cheap are good in the stock market. So let's take a look here all the way out to 2031. Amazon expected is expected to be a trillion dollar company starting in 2029. Right now, they're at a 60, $647 billion company, 2025, you guys can see, and so on. Double digit growth for revenue. Their EBITDA, double digit clips. Looks like we're supposed to take a dip here in 2028. Who knows? That may cause, an op that may cause another opportunity for long-term investors to invest into it. The operating margins, double digit from 2024 all the way up to 2030 and 2031. 
earnings per share is continuously to grow. Looks like we may have some issues in 2030 and 2031, but who knows what that may bring. That may change here in the future. This is all just hypothetical analysis um, data that they uh, put in based off of numbers that are in and products that they have out now. So as you guys know, Amazon is has a prime ecosystem. You know, they they root the roots are in the e-commerce. Prime membership has become famous. There are estimated 167 million Prime subscribers just in the United States, with an estimated 129 million total households in America. It's safe to say that the most people that most people who shop online subscribe to Prime. And after all, Amazon dominates US online shopping with approximately 40% of market share which is why the DOJ is coming after them because they think they dominate the market share, but they only have 40% of it, almost half of it, which, which is fine, but customers choose to go with prime. No one, like I said, no one is forcing them to do this. People go where business is easy and very, very price, very easily priced for them and where they can make, you know, things get to them very quickly. Now everyone's hooked on getting their products in two days. If you don't get something in two days, people are normally like frowning up, like where's my Amazon package prime started, with e-commerce perks like free shipping, once again, but the membership expanded as Amazon built out its business. Today, Amazon is in several consumer-facing business segments, including media, streaming, and now the healthcare. They own it all. They You can get your medicine from there. A doctor can send subscri your medicine subscription. They can deliver it. You got movies, music, sports, so on. So that brings more value to Amazon and to Prime. The stickier it becomes with customers and the more Amazon can charge for it, it helps Amazon grow new products or services. And, and this normally generates around $40 billion in reoccurring revenue at its size today. So that's predictable cash flow for Amazon, which is good for us because that helps with that revenue growth. And then eventually that turns into profits for us down the line. Amazon has leaned into live sports, as I mentioned, to bolster its advertising business scooping up rights to broadcast NBA games, WNBA, which has been huge. They're going to start doing that in 2025. This adds to Amazon existing national or the NFL rights. But they, like I said, they got Thursday night football. You know, live sports are a huge draw, strengthening Prime's appeal. I wouldn't be surprised to see Amazon continuing. I'm expanding Prime into new industries, which which I expect as well, because I, I, I love Prime. They also have years remaining of cloud growth. It's hard to discuss Amazon without talking about Amazon Web Services. The cloud platform, it launched in 2006. Now it's becoming its main source of profits. AWS, what I mentioned before earlier in the video. Amazon won in, won in e-commerce because it's consolidated the retail business model and used this massive size to offer superior service and price. That's what consumers want. They want great service at great prices. They will go where that is 99.9% .9 of the time. Cloud is playing out similarly. Amazon amassed an enormous computing system housed in data centers. It rents it out, computing capacity to customers, offering better performance for less money than it would cost companies to build and maintain their own. Bingo. There are millions of other businesses worldwide, so widespread cloud margin takes time, which means that the further that they have to go out, it will take time to, you know, more time to generate that revenue because everyone's not set up and essentially in the right way to all funnel in the cash flow. So it does take time. Patience pays. That's why AWS and other cloud platforms have grown over the next decade, over a decade, and it's not over yet. Estimates from Mordor Intelligence estimate that the global computing market was worth $587 billion last year. This is going to grow at a double dip or a double clip at 16%, reaching $2.29 trillion in 2032, which is why we see that revenue and earnings per share continue to grow up. So we're going to take a look here at the chart. This is Amazon here year to date. It started out at around 151 here, and now we closed up here right at 182.53. We had a high of 195.37 um, here about a couple weeks ago. And then, you know, eventually, you know, we we had some some halting right in this area here. This is when I thought we were really going to take off in this area, but we didn't because Jeff Bezos was selling his shares. He had a lock deal to set in where he starts selling shares at 199, 200, and so on. And then it inched up and spiked up to 20 And then we, you know, we stopped, made some trending downwards. And, and then we just kind of just been in this consolidation area here, which I think is an opportunity for sure to get into for some Amazon, especially right in this area here. I mean, we're 
from the highest high that you know we've had in the last couple of months of 195.37. Another analyst, 45 of them actually, zero have said sell it, two of them said hold it, which is which is totally fine, but 43 of them are saying buy. Once again, not financial advice. This is all stuff that I pull you know, from my, my investing platforms that I do my research on. Once again, they're expecting a 23% clip to the upside at 223, which is very average. And then some of them are expecting to go as high as 265. You know, that's when in the next, you know, 12 month forecast. But I'm looking for the next, you know, 10 years, 20 years by buying it at Amazon now at 182, looking back when it's three, four hundred dollars, who knows, in the next 10 years, and be like, wow, I wish I would have bought more. This is this is this is one of those situations here to get in, like I said, to one of the largest um e-commerce giants and one of the largest um advertising giants, you know, that's out in the world here. Amazon's ownership. We still have it at 67% of institutional owners owning Amazon. We still have some insiders, and then we got the public here that are owning more than people that um, that work at Amazon. But what I like about this, for me as a long-term investor, maybe you can take this tip too, is if you see anything over 60% from an institutional standpoint, and institutional means Vanguard, um, Schwab, all those big, big name um mutual funds and brokers that basically take people's money and invest it into the company, they're still holding Amazon. They're still over, like I said, over 50% on the chart here. And they're continuously to add and people that I know on Twitter, um, where I basically hang out at um, with all my investing friends, you know, this is where, you know, this is the time here where they're, they're adding more shares and adding $20, $50. We're not asking you to go buy the whole share. If you don't have, you know, the 182 for the share, that's okay. You could throw 50 bucks in this week, throw 50 in next month, but have something working for you in the back end. And eventually that compounding interest of gains and profits and everything will pay off down the line. And then you'll start seeing your money slowly making money. Obviously, the more that you put in is the more that you get out of it. It's just like anything in life, right? And to end the video, guys, this is from my guy, Disney Beach, um, out in California. I like what he put here. Fellow investing crew, don't be swayed by the daily or monthly ups and downs of the stock market. Instead, base your investment decisions on a company's fundamental business operations and your thorough research, which we've just covered here with Amazon. We went over the business operations, what they're doing for profits. We even went over the lawsuit because I want to tell you guys everything about Amazon and what's going on and why the price came down. And you got to see it as an opportunity because the market go the market is rigged to go up over time. Go look at the S&P 500 since inception. You're, it, it's more likely it's gone up 100% over time, right? But you see those dips in there. That means that some news came out. Some analysts may have said something about the stock market and inflation this, inflation that. All that is is written on written through the smoke. It's opportunity to buy the dip. And that's all that I have for you guys, guys. If you have any comments or anything, leave them down in the comment section for me. Once again, it is your boy, the Dividend Dog, on Investing on a 9 to 5 YouTube channel. Please hit the like and subscribe to the channel, guys, if you haven't. And if you have, thank you guys for doing that. I really appreciate it. It's helping the page grow. And it's letting me know you guys are liking the videos that I'm putting out. Until next time, guys, as always, I'm out.